And we are live. Welcome everybody for another installment of Where in the World. This week we're off to Japan and I have four uh, interesting gentlemen with me today. I'll go through intro introductions in just a moment here. Um, but just some nuts and bolts to take care of as always. Obviously, I'm not Sarah, um, Sarah Murdoch. She's gallivanting around Portugal somewhere. I'm Reed Cohen of Imprint Tours. I think you've gotten used to me by now. I sub for Sarah quite often and we do collaborate on tours all around the world. So as you know, Where in the World is our program where we just wanna connect with our travel friends and professionals and colleagues all around the globe. I'm particularly excited about today's programming because I really know very little about Japan. It's not a country that I've traveled to. I haven't even done any book learning, any research about Japan. So I'm ready to dive in here and ask a bunch of questions and, and learn about um, this uh, uh, great uh, this great country that we hope to be bringing tours to in the future. So I think your screen is always opposite of mine. So I'm just going to go in a circle here and introduce everybody one at a time. Um, first of all is Hisa. Hisa, uh, tell, tell us where, you're, where you are from, where you're broadcasting from. Um, I'm broadcasting from Kyoto. And, uh, but my back image is it's in Hiroshima, <laughs> but I'm living in Kyoto. Okay, I'm so not, you're yeah. in Kyoto, but your but your background picture is Hiroshima, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's a Miyajima Island. Excellent. And then yeah. we've got Yo-Yo. Yes, yes. Hi, Reed. Hello. And where yeah. are you? Are you? Um, I, we are we are from uh, Kyoto. We are we are at the office office of uh, the the office that we are working for. Yeah. And um, yeah, we we both um, both Masa and me uh, are from Kyoto, and we we live we live here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So Masa, you're up next. Welcome. Uh, yeah. Also, I live in Kyoto, and the two of us are in the office now from the conference room. We are joining here today. Yeah. Okay. So what Masa and Yoyo were saying is that uh, they, they're working in the office of the company that uh, help manages all of my tours abroad. Um, but both of them were former tour managers themselves, so have a lot of experience out in the field as well. And last but not least, we have Yoshi. Good, good morning to you, Yoshi. And where are you coming to us from? Uh, good morning. My name is Yoshi. I'm from the Yokohama, just southwest of Tokyo. Okay. Second well, largest city in Japan. Okay. I think most Americans have heard of Yokohama. So excellent. Um, okay, well, let's, let's jump right in then. And of course, to our viewers, if you have uh, um, questions or comments as we go along today. I'll try to keep one eye every once in a while on the Facebook broadcast. And uh, if I see any questions, I'll pass them along. Uh, and uh, as, as you're probably used to on these Where in the World programs, I always like to start with finding out how people got uh, involved in the travel business. So, um, so uh, Hisa, we're going to start with you. How is it that you got involved uh, in in the travel industry, tell us that story. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, personally, I always loved the travel, and then um, I was I used to be the tour guide for Japanese customer in Australia oh, for wow. eight years. Yes, and then um, uh, I loved uh, to guide the people, and uh, but then the, I also want to guide uh, Japanese people, uh, not just Japanese people, to oversee people about Japan. And then I just uh, found a, um, a job opportunity uh, in a peak website and then I apply. And uh, that time the guy called, uh, he's also Ozzy Alan. He is a manager of the yeah, peak office. And then I got the, this job. Unfortunately, COVID-19 happened, but uh, I got the chance to guide uh, uh, Japan yeah, for the tour and then I could join the, um, like, uh, yeah, some experience for guiding Japan too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then now I, currently I just do the remote tour sometime. Yes. 
So, yeah. unfortunately, yeah. COVID nineteen happened to all yeah. of the travel industry. So, <laughs> we all know that's a that's a blow. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay, Yo-Yo, we're going to come to you. How did you get involved in the travel business? You're you're muted right now, so unmute yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um, after graduation of uh, university, I I traveled um, Mexico, uh, Nepal, and China, India, and uh, like um, yeah, Tibet and stuff. And I had very much um, like deep experience. Uh, uh, while traveling, so I I wish I could be um I can I, I wish uh, to be um um yeah uh, tour guide to introduce um, my own country to the people from around the world, and I took um certificate to be a guide. Yeah. Okay. Is um now. Does everybody here have some sort of credentials, some sort of guiding certificate? And and yo yo, you answer this question, please. Is that a is that a rigorous type of uh, of testing that happens? And 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 you know, I think that's that's something that's different everywhere we go. Uh, I'm just guessing that it would probably be a pretty rigorous process in Japan. Is that correct? Yes, uh, we have a national certificate to for. for uh, for tour, tour leaders, uh, I mean, for uh, interpreter guide. And we, 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 sh we have to yeah, take the um, um, test um, annual, annual uh, it's annually uh, held. And yeah, we, pass, um, we can be a certificate tour guide, yes. How, how long does it take? How long does that preparation take? Um, I, I, it took, it took, um, for me about, um, about a year. Yeah. And you need, you need, um, that, uh, foreign language skill and also the knowledge is on, um, uh, Japan itself, history, uh, geographics and stuff. And also the, not only that, uh, politics and, and, yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Masa, how about you? How did you get uh, how did you get involved in the tourism business? Well, uh, for me, I used to live in Brisbane, Australia, like uh, Pisa. So you know, one, that was for me first time like being away from Japan for a long time. I used to be nearly two years, and then learning English and then attending a school to learn tourism, and then realize how Japan is beautiful and then you know convenience. Uh, easy to be. So, you know, I learned English and I speak some English at least. So, when I came back to Japan, I also attended a two year school in Tokyo to learn more about story. And that's when I found out about uh, this case you were talking. And then it kind of like a very difficult, challenging exam, like only held once a year. And you said she took only one year, but for me, like, uh, Took like a couple of years. So, but yeah, when I got and then I started as a like a private tour leader. That's when I used to live in Tokyo. So, like uh, around Tokyo for a family or like a couple of or like uh, a single traveler. And then I found a company who are doing like a, a group tour, like uh, around 15 people traveling in Japan <laughs> in public transport. And then that's when I started yeah, working for that company. Okay. All right. So obviously the, the, the certification program, that's you work at your own speed. That's you, you go along and rather than it being one year or 18 months or a two year program, it's just when you are ready to take the exams, I guess. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, only in August every year. And then you have like a full subject. So you need to pass every uh, subject. And then there's a uh, second stage, which is for like this interview. So you need to pass step one, step two, and then finally you can get uh, a license. I see. Okay. Okay. And finally, Yoshi, uh, tell us, Yoshi, how you got involved in uh, tourism. Yeah. Uh, before starting the guiding, I worked for the uh, coffee company, um, importing a Dutch 
coffee system for out of home. And many Dutch colleagues came to Japan. I saw them around the market and our factory and many towns. And also they went out at night enjoying the drink and chat. And everyone likes the, my guiding. So I decided to go that direction after retired. And that's what I started the guiding. Mm -hmm. Uh, it was first one was 1918 and 19 and no, no, 2018, 2018 and 2019 and then COVID-19 hits. So I currently I'm just doing a virtual tour on the online. Okay. All right. Um, so what is, um, I'm back to you now, he, so what is, yes. what's your, um, What's your, what is it you like the most about this job of taking people around the country? What, uh, what do you like most about the job and the lifestyle? Uh, yeah, there are that many, but uh, one thing I like talking naturally. So okay. <laughs> one of the things that, uh, yeah, I can meet lots of uh, pe people from different background and then um, we can share experience and yeah, that's uh, also, um, many times I can learn from the customer too. So when I meet the uh, people from different backgrounds, they, they tell the something that um, new story oh. I never heard. And then of course, I can see many different place, different culture. So that's the uh, most, uh, my, my most favorite things for this job. Yeah. Um, are you willing to share your least favorite thing? What What do you like least about the job? Least. least. Uh, in my op opinion, the, the traveling is fun, but the most important is the safety. So without safety, it's, you know, we can, so don't, don't want to share like a, some accident or like mm -hmm. a, so of course, sometimes we can avoid natural disaster. It happen, but uh, that's the yeah, incident doesn't. Right. I want. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a job we have is to make sure everybody's safe and to and to handle the emergencies when they come up. Everybody looks to us, obviously. Uh, yeah. I, I didn't mention it uh, to you four, but um, I I worked as a tour manager in Europe for twenty five years. But you know so. Um, I, I don't do as much of that anymore. I'd much rather come to Japan and let so, let someone like you, one of you four, do all the heavy lifting for my groups. But I certainly know the life and the lifestyle. So, Yo Yo, how about you? What what's your what's your favorite and your and your not so favorite uh, parts of uh, of this job? Um, I I used to used to be I, I used to uh, work as a tour guide, but um, I ended up. Um, being a um, uh, reservation coordinator right now, mm -hmm. office. Um, my favorite is um, meeting people, but I found out that I didn't like talking that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, that's a um, yeah, and um, so uh, yeah, I ended up being um, uh, working here. So um, and uh, yeah. Uh, well, anything else? Well, does, does working in the office sounds like that's a little bit better fit for you then, is that right? Yeah, that's what I feel, yeah, um, yes. I was a little bit afraid you were gonna say that you, that you like people, but then you found out that you didn't like them so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I didn't like, like explaining things like to people like in general, so I, I yeah, very much like like meeting people, but yeah, I, I'm not good at like you know, explaining things. <laughs> <In general. laughs> sorry, sorry to push you up, but that that would make it tough to be a, a, a tour manager, right? If you didn't yeah, like yeah, 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 right. <laughs> okay, uh, how about you, Masa? What uh, what's right. your least favorite? Right. Yeah. You know, I think. You can get to do it for free, you know, even, you know, go back to many times, like many places, but you have a friend there, like you, when you go to a restaurant, local restaurant, you get to know each other, 
and becoming friends. So every time bring some customers and then like introduce you know, each other and then making like a local community. That's something I, yeah, like, you know, like to help local community and then like connecting the dots, you know, the customer and the local people there. And then you can travel all year. So you get to see many different of the seasons in Japan. So like in spring, sakura, like so pink and the autumn, like uh, pulling leaves, like uh, maple, maple leaves. So like a very crimson, like uh, yellow, brown, so beautiful. So I think, yeah, it's a job, but you get to travel for free, but you need to be, uh, you know, for me, it was uh, like a maximum 15, a group of 15 people. So the customer is to, like, uh, you tell me, like, your job is like having a chat, you know, like impossible to coordinate, like, uh, for example, you know, we are meeting back here at 5, 5 p.m. and then we go back to the hotel, but some people, you know, don't show up, so we need to go find someone. That's at least like at least my favorite part, but it was, yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's okay. Okay. Okay, Yoshi, what's, uh, what's your favorite part of, of this? this uh, I love Japanese food, culture, history. So I'd like to talk about that with my customers. That is my favorite part. Okay. Um, this favorite part is the first meeting with the guest. So I don't know what kind of people they are. So uh -huh. I, I'm a little bit nervous about that. Yeah. But after getting to know each other, it's been good. But if something's wrong, it might be a very tough job. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, I understand what you're saying about that first meeting. That's such an important uh, moment to set the tone of a tour. And what I found, uh, you know, especially in the last, you know, five, six years that I was managing tours, I, I really needed a good positive energy from the group in order to, to for, for the best of me to come out, right? It was, I think when I first started, I was younger, I could, I could generate my own enthusiasm, but the older I got and the longer I did the job, I really needed a positive energy feedback from the group so on that first night sometimes you don't get that <laughs> and, and sometimes it develops later and every once in a while you have a group that never gets there but um uh yeah that first night is is a, a an important moment there um i i I'm a, i thought somebody might talk about uh the, uh, the downside of travel, of being away so long, that was always the hardest thing for me, you know, I have a family and- uh, I'm sorry, I have to leave now. So oh, okay. Yeah. Nice Yoshi, to talk oh. to you. Yeah. Okay, Yoshi, <laughs> to depart. so thank you for participating, Yoshi. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah, I forgot to mention that Yoshi had told me that he was gonna have to break away, so. Anyway, um, that was always tough for me. You know, I, I, my daughter's all grown up now, but you know, when she was little and I'd have to go on, the, and of course, working in Europe, I didn't just, I wasn't just gone for 12 days or two weeks. I was gone, you know, they would string together several tours because it was expensive to fly back and forth. So I'd be gone for six weeks or eight weeks even, not after Maya came along, less less often eight weeks, but four weeks, eight weeks, uh, six weeks, not at all unusual. That that was the hardest part for me. Um, okay, um, let's 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 talk about Japan. Let's talk about the resource. Uh, you know, this country that's obviously a long and storied history, uh, fascinating destination, I think, for Americans, uh, and certainly great partners with the United States. In the you know in the post-war era, in terms of uh, a, a, a democratic institutions and and a powerful economic nation, um, <clears throat> but let's let's uh, let's get more specific. And and I'm going to change up the order here a little bit. Um, Yo Yo, I'll start with you. Um, what is your what's your favorite place in Japan to take a group of foreigners? A place where you really feel like you can shine and and really, um, but also really is an important thing for foreigners to see and learn about Japan? What, what would be your number one place to show people? Um, my, I, as I started my career in uh, Kyoto, and this is the oldest capital uh, of Japan, um, I uh, strongly recommend uh, people to come 
visit um, uh, Kyoto uh, as, a, as um, the first des destination um, in Japan. Okay, I mean, I'm that that doesn't surprise me. I, I, I see a lot of head nodding too right. with, with Masa and, and Hira, Hiro, um, Hira, sorry, Hisa, but um, so clearly that's okay. And let's let's say this too what would be the, the number one site there in Kyoto for people to see? So, destination and site, what's what's the number one site they should see? Uh, um, for me, um. Um, the rock and sun garden in Ruanji or other other um, gardens um, uh, oriented uh, of uh, Zen Buddhism. Okay. Mm, because um, many, many are like uh, uh, a lot of culture uh, stuff uh, based on, on uh, Zen Buddhism, um, Japanese culture. A lot of uh, Japanese cultures are, are based on uh, Zen Buddhism, so I think this that's the uh, that should be the first one to uh, yeah check out for for um, um, yeah foreign travelers. Right. Mm. So so they an understanding of Zen Buddhism is is pretty crucial for understanding Japan and the Japanese people, I would think. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's the one of the uh, yeah stuff you sh you should uh, see yeah. Okay, I definitely want to come back to this uh, to talk about the gardens a little bit, but but Masa, what would you say? Favorite favorite place to go, favorite destination, and 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 best site to show foreigners. Well, uh, for me, it's Hiroshima, and uh, you know there's a the peace park there. So the reason why I choose is because you know that is a place where like a, in human history first atomic bomb was dropped in 1945. Uh, over six, and uh, I used to take the group there every time, and then I needed, I must have, you know, explained the story of a little girl called Sadako. So she was uh, very little when the, the bomb was dropped, and then it was okay, like uh, everything, like a half house, like uh, the village was destroyed, but her miraculously survived without injury. But after some years passed, she had developed like leukemia because of the radiation from the bomb. And then she had to stay in the school. Before that, she was very active. She liked sports and then very good at running. But uh, unfortunately, she couldn't do that anymore. And uh, she had to stay for hospital. And then in Japan, we have uh, like, uh, when you, know, you want to make a wish, you sometimes make hold up a uh, origami hiccup frame. You hold. And then we believe that if you make 1,000 of them, like uh, your wish will come true. So she kept holding every day at the hospital. But uh, unfortunately, you know, even she reached uh, 1,000 of them, but uh, leukemia didn't go away. And then eventually she passed away. But every time I tell this story to the group, I you know, get very emotional and sometimes tear comes down. And, uh, yeah, it's something I need to tell other Japanese, you know, like we present to Japan what happened, and then we cannot repeat the same mistake as a human being living in the world. So, yeah. um, for me, it's a big, like a destination, like, and then she has a history and uh, a sense of peace, you know, for our next generation, especially. Well, thank you. Absolutely. I mean, a powerful moral message, uh, but but also I think a story of resiliency and this this woman's courage and 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 whatnot. So, okay, excellent. Um, Hisa, what's uh, your favorite place and your favorite site to show people? Uh, uh, one of my favorite place also in uh, Kyoto, uh, like um, Hanami Koji or those are old. A style street in Kyoto, that the Maiko or Geiko area, because um, like a cap, the Kyoto, the uh, old capital city in Japan, and then uh, it's a capital city for more than one thousand years, and then currently the people who uh, like overseas people has an image of Japan, probably tea ceremony or those kimono things. And then 
those culture is uh, of um, mostly like uh, raised in uh, Kyoto. Also. So before Kyoto, Nara was capital city, but the current uh, the culture people who know like those cultures that come from like a, yeah, there's a much uh, become much grow in uh, Kyoto. So then um, in, in uh, Jap Japan, like uh, during wartime, uh, lots of city go bomb and then destroy like uh, old building, especially that's uh, made of the wood. So usually burn up, but like Kyoto didn't get the, you know, the, those um, big bombing things. So they still keep the like, old street. And of course, Kanazawa or other area has uh, some uh, like an old style house, but uh, Kyoto has most. That's why the, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, also it's a uh, good to see. And uh, I'm not sure the, you know, the tourists have the chance to see the, you know, Geiko or Maiko. <laughs> oh, it's because it's there, quite there. But uh, still, if they come, maybe they may have a chance to see them. And then uh, also all like, the kimono uh, mm -hmm. culture or even food. Like uh, the Japanese food is very unique, but especially in the Kyoto, they have a really old style, like a uh, traditional way to make the food. So they have their own unique way to make the food. So that's why, yeah, I want to introduce the, you know, the those street in uh, Kyoto. Like, yeah. And then, also, yeah, Mount Fuji is famous, but Mount, if not just Kyoto, in Japan, Mount Fuji is uh, good to uh, show. Like, it's the uh, highest mountain, but also, even compared with other mountains in the world, I think one of the most beautiful shapes. Right. Yeah, so it's uh, good to. <laughs> uh, I would say that. that that uh, Mount Fuji is the iconic image of Japan. Yeah. I mean, you, you see a yeah. picture of Mount Fuji, you, I've never been to Japan, but I know instantly that that's what I'm looking at, you know? And so, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned food, let's let's talk about food. Cause I have to, I have to say that um, if you go to a Japanese restaurant in the United States, which is my only exposed to Japanese food, it's just, you know, it's, you, we think sushi and sashimi and maybe some noodles and stuff. But my, the more I've talked to all of you and other Japanese people, it's, it sounds like the, that Japanese food is diverse and, and, you know, that there's all kinds of flavors. So what we're being exposed to in America is maybe just a small little bit of that. Um, am I on the right track here? Um, who, who loves food? Who wants to take the ball here and talk about Japanese food? And uh, if it's, is it regional? Is it, is it the same all across the country? Who wants to kick this off for us? Do I, am I gonna put somebody on the spot? <laughs> Okay. I, also, you look nervous. I'm gonna pick you. Talk. Tell us about Japanese food a little bit. I miss Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. As you mentioned, yeah, we have lots of different uh, variety of food in Japan. Like also, like uh, from north to south, Japan, like you know, away from each other, like about three thousand kilometers. So taste like a base broth. We say dashi is different. Uh, north side of Japan tend to be more like a thick, and then west by the Kansai, like uh, Kyoto, Osaka, Hiroshima tend to be thin. Depends on like uh, where you live, like uh, you prefer different kind of taste for different things. Also, one of my favorite Japanese food is called ramen, which is noodle. And then also for ramen, you have different type of soups, like uh, Broth made from chicken, like a pork or pork bones, or like fish, and also like kind of creamy, or we also have tomato ramen. So it's just one word ramen, but it has different, so many flavors. And then ramen restaurants often have different, like a side dish. Uh, one was also my favorite is called gyoza dumplings. It's like like a dumpling, like a, you can eat with one bite, and then you drop in like a tare, which is like a sweet sauce, and then you eat with rice or ramen, it's perfect match. And then 
If you haven't tried me, I really recommend to try ramen here in Japan. Also, I used to live in Brisbane, uh, well, Australia, and then I tried some of the ramen, but it's not really the same as the one you can taste here. So you really want to try here ramen in Japan. Okay, Hisa, I kind of cut you off there. You wanted to chime in on the Japanese food. Go ahead. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I want to introduce sushi in Japan. Uh, of course, nowadays sushi is so popular. So the word sushi itself become like an international language. So that's good. But, uh, um, yeah, like Masa, I also used to live in Australia. Australian people also love sushi. But, uh, uh, quite different, like uh, normally sushi ingredients is uh, salmon, <laughs> lots of salmon. So salmon nice, and uh, I love salmon too, but uh, uh, the one sushi also called uh, California roll. So <laughs> maybe you try them. It's okay. avocado and the salmon <laughs> inside. Really and... Or is that, is that an Americanization of, of, of sushi? <laughs> yeah, when it comes from California. Okay. Yeah, I love California law, but I never tasted it before <laughs> when I was in Japan. And then, oh, okay, California law, but then I like it actually. <laughs> so it's good. But uh, if uh, tourists come to Japan, they are the more variety of sushi. Actually, uh -huh. sushi, uh, um, it's not just tuna as well. Mm -hmm. Like uh, they are the more, yeah, different type of uh, ingredient, octopus or even squid. And, yeah, so if they, you know, come to <laughs> Japan, I want to, you know, I want them to try different, more different type of sushi. So mm -hmm. actually I, yeah, before uh, that the tourists try the Japanese sushi, then they are very interested. Uh, okay, my country normally sushi is just a salmon tuna, <laughs> that's it, or sometimes beef inside, but the, uh, yeah, in Japan, so many different, so they are very curious. Oh, like, <laughs> what's this, what's this, so try on. I so, think Amer Americans will have to be adventurous eaters when they come to Japan to, to try some things that they might not normally think of to, to put in. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um, hey, I, uh, I just checked uh, the Facebook page and there is a comment. Julie um, has written, when can we visit Japan? I heard things were not going well over there. I'm assuming she means the COVID situation. Uh, I really wish to go. Um, can you guys comment on what's going on with COVID and, and what, what, what the next little while sounds like? Yo-Yo, uh, you're nodding your head. Can you bring us up to speed? How are things going there in Japan with COVID? Um, the vaccine situation is um, getting um, improved um, day by day, but especially young people still don't want to get in don't want to get vaccine in general really? so i'm not pretty much sure what what the situation will be like um yeah be cleared or not but yeah hmm. is um yeah another, another, yeah. Uh, yeah another state of emergency declared in tokyo and okinawa up to uh, almost 20 seconds, so uh, it's going to be tough, like people can go out so much and then, like, you know, also we are hosting Olympic in 10 days. So oh, that's go out, but, yes. you know, right. Mm. Did, I, did I hear um, on the news that they've decided not to let anybody, uh, no spectators? Uh, yeah, that's right. yeah, that's right. yeah. Mm. No audience at the stadiums. I mean, mm. uh, most people watch the Olympics on television, but I, for those right. people that had, you know, want and families of the of the yeah. uh, those who pay like uh, you know a amount of money to get the ticket and then they waited, you know, it didn't happen last year, and then this year, and then no. So many people yeah. they are disappointed. Yeah. But but you know, I mean, we're talking about a a pandemic, right? That that none of right. us are saying the situation where things are just happen the way we expect sometimes. Does, does anybody know um, how, uh, what percentage of the Japanese population has been vaccinated? Is that, is that a figure anybody knows? Or, or even? 30, 30 to 40. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
I, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't catch the number. Uh, five to thirty, I reckon. Mm -hmm. First That's the company the second shots. Okay, I, around thirty. Yeah, thirty percent. About thirty percent. Okay. And, and, and is, the, is the vaccine available for anybody who wants to, or is it still a little hard to get? It's, it's available, right, for, for everyone, I, I believe, now. Okay. Is uh, it problem is, problem is uh, you know, you get, like, a, a ticket from local office that has a number. So you need to have a number to make a reservation to get vaccinated. And then now, a big place like uh, Kyoto, Osaka, Tokyo, like uh, the local you know, municipal office, they stopped taking the reservation because we don't have enough like uh, supply from the government to you know provide the vaccine. So we are currently stopping. But uh, I saw the news uh, like a couple of days ago, like uh, Osaka starts taking the reservation back from first of August or like uh, August. So getting back, but still you know kind of very slow, slow at the moment. Yeah. Well, that's. That's a tough subject uh, in, in any country. Um, thanks for your question, Julie. Um, okay, I'm, I wanna circle back to this idea of the Japanese gardens, because this is, I mean, that's another thing that when you think about Japan, you think about the, the gardens. And I know that there's more than one kind of garden. There are Zen gardens and other kinds. So here's my question. Um, why, what is it about the Japanese character that, um, that, that these gardens are so important because it seems to be part of the culture. Um, if anybody wants to take a stab at, at why gardens are so important, what, what does it say about the culture? Um, can I put you on the spot, Yo-Yo? Have you got a... Why? <laughs> 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 It's, um, it's, it's okay to say I don't know. I mean, that's that's a. Good <laughs> um, <laughs> I think that did. Uh, I think I want to pass it on to. Uh, okay. Uh, let me, uh, okay. Let me yo -yo. gonna <laughs> save you there. I I, I, I I was I went to Yo Yo because you had talked about the importance. Yeah, of that's it. right. That's awesome. right. Okay. Uh, so uh, what do you? <laughs> Well, uh, you know, many people have different, you know, point of views, and then, in my opinion, like, uh, in the past, like, uh, you mentioned Zen Garden, like, uh, like uh, local temples used to have before, and then not so common nowadays, but, uh, you know, making Zen Garden, it's like a kind of training for monks, so if the garden is, like, uh, looks not organized, you know, arranged perfectly or dirty, your mind, like, uh, not in a focus or settled or right. prepared. So in order to show the kind of your mindness, like uh, to the visitors visiting the house or a temples, you know, your garden has to be kept very clean and organized. So for Japanese people, I think it's, uh, you know, gardening leads to cultivating their mind. That's something connected then, I believe. So that's kind of basic idea of having a gar garden important in Japan. But also, like sometimes Japanese house is very small and we don't have a really big garden, big space. So like in the past, we used to have like a, a tea room and then they used to be very small and then there's not so many like a big window to show outside. So they used to have only tiny space to show from the inside to the outside. So they used to have like a beautiful, like a kind of painting setting in the garden so that you can enjoy while you are sitting inside a small tiny house, tiny place, and then you can see outside like, how beautiful it is just from a tiny window to see through. Right. So, so both a, a, a focus for cooperation when it comes to Zen gardens, but then the other gardens are, there's a real practical reason that just uh, that people need some connection with nature. And I, I, I understand that, 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 that there's a similar philosophy in Europe and, and of course in American cities as well. That's why we have big parks, uh, right. just to connect with nature, so. Mm -hmm. uh, can I say something? Yeah, please, please jump in. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I agree also, yeah, like, uh, like Masa also said, uh, yeah, this is just my opinion, but uh, like, uh, um, like Japanese, 
or traditional like religious Shinto, Shintoism. And the Shintoism is uh, the concept of their uh, idea is uh, every nature has their own God. So like uh, the Japanese will say Yaoros no Kami, that's uh, eight million God. So even tree or uh, mountain or river, those uh, nature thing has their uh, own God. And then um, when Japanese uh, make a garden also, it's of course uh, they are the Zen, Zen idea as well, but uh, like uh, Masa said, Japan has a small country and then people live in a small place. And then sometimes not everyone can uh, like uh, keep, you know, nice view. Like uh, if <laughs> someone rich people, maybe they have a huge space and then can see mountain or waterfall, but uh, cannot. So sometimes they just make a small size of the nature <laughs> in the garden. So they are uh, um, make, actually just put a small stone, but it's mean meaning of river or sometimes they just put the stone, but it's the meaning of the island. So they make a kind of diorama of the mm -hmm. you know, small scale of, yeah, then they can enjoy from their, in, from inside their house, they see that those trees or like, a, it's just a tree, but actually that's a meaning of mountain. And, yeah. So uh, near my house uh, has a, a, a it's a one temple called Daigoji Temple. It's a wild heritage near, near my house. They are the nice uh, garden as well. But then the, the garden, um, something is just a stone, but uh, it's meaning of island or meaning. This is actually uh, meaning of the Kamo River, you know, those. So they are so Japanese are always have a respect for the nature and then they also yeah, make small size of nature in the garden. That's yeah, that's why so you say you say the Japanese people respect nature. Is is that something that's traditional and, and historic? Yeah. yeah, traditional idea like when they especially long time ago probably uh, even now Japan has lots of natural disaster. So yeah, all time people, you, you know, they couldn't understand what's happening, why happening. Probably God's angry and God. Yeah, they, they always believe there was some special power and the God's giving, you know, nature and maybe the God angry or so that's why they really respect <laughs> and fear, have feeling of fear to the nature. Yeah, so mm. obviously, a, 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 a historical, traditional reverence. Yeah, um, yeah. Because I think yeah. in the United States, I have to say we're kind of late to the game with that. I mean, we nature was to be conquered, you know, and subjugated and, and respect for nature and preserving nature. That's a, that's a fairly modern sensibility here um, in the United States. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, speaking of America and, and American culture being different, um, you've all worked with Americans and Westerners, a uh, couple of you there, you know, with your, your backgrounds in Australia and whatnot. Um, what's, what's, what's the best cultural tip you have for visiting Westerners to Japan to, to help them fit in? Does Yo-Yo, uh, uh, you know, do, you, do you think of, oh, sorry, if I, I give it to you again. <laughs> let, you know, let me, let me give you an, let me, Help out with an example, like um, I, you know, I've noticed just from my travels. Um, I, I'm not passing judgment, but um, but Chinese people, they, they don't they don't line up and wait for their turn. It's it's a cultural thing, right? And so, if I were taking a group of Chinese people to America, the first thing I would tell them is, "Look, this isn't China. We are visitors. We're guests." We have to wait our turn politely, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and I might say, um, and uh, in America, in, in, in Japan, people are not so noisy in public. May, we, we need to be a little quieter or, you know, that's, that's the sort of thing I'm, I'm after. Um, what, uh, you know, and, and I don't know what your tips might be for Japan. Um, who, I, okay, I'm not gonna put Yo-Yo on the spot again. <laughs> 
Oh, and okay, okay. Let, oh, let me just, one, <laughs> just just a small thing, but um, uh, in contrast to uh, the um, individual, uh, in, in in contrast to uh, the fact that individualism is the 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 key key concept uh, for Westerners, yeah. we it's the uh, the group uh, for Japanese. So that's why that's why while um, Chinese people get into the line, uh, Japanese don't like be line uh, like organize uh, <laughs> organized. Yeah. So the, the the key concept is um yeah the group for uh, Japanese. The group the group is more important and and, and group is more important. And we we have um, the words two words. Uh, honne and tatemae. Honne is the, um, the true, true sound, uh, the meaning that uh, the, the true feeling uh, the one half. And uh, the tatemae is the uh, is, uh, voice uh, from the group, the voice of um, the group that um, uh, I, <laughs> I forgot to. I, Forget the explanation of that, but well, let me let me pass it on to Masa. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, Masa. Well, yeah. I think what I wanted to tell you is that like a hone and tatemai is only like a true feeling of your like your yourself, but you keep it yourself. But then tatemai is like even you don't feel like that way, but you tell people nicely so that you can maintain harmony within the group. So. Okay. Mentioned about the group, but uh, like, uh, like harmony in the group is very important in Japan. Okay, so, like we don't want to stand out in the group, like you know, we want to fit in the crowd. That's kind of like a basic idea. So, okay, yeah, yeah. See, that would be, I, I think, a really important lesson mm -hmm. for Americans to learn day one, right? On the you know, mm -hmm. when, yes. you know that important first meeting that. Uh, uh, that Yoshi was concerned about. Um, <laughs> that would be a, a good thing to address. Now, is is the is the concept of of face or losing face is that a Japanese thing? I know I know in China that's a big thing. Is that the, is that the same in China? Do you guys? I'm sorry, in Japan is that? Do you know what I'm I'm asking? Hmm. Maybe <laughs> Japan no. Yeah, maybe not as strong as I mean the Chinese people. I mean, losing face <laughs> things, but maybe um, how to, yeah. maybe you wouldn't say it that way. Is there is there a part of Japanese culture of of you know you were talking about harmony and keeping the harmony? That's what made me think of this because that's what saving face is all about: is not embarrassing mm -hmm. someone, not embarrassing yourself. Um, is there is there an element to that in in Japanese culture? Mm, yeah, I think a lot of Japanese care what other people look. So that's the first thing they really care. Maybe you know, but it's more like, oh, I want to do this. So that's why I'm doing this, like more Hindi. But Japanese sometimes, oh, I want to do this. Oh, but maybe other people think, <laughs> and, you know, but way, then they keep. So like, yeah, like they also say that uh, maybe lots of people still want to talk on the subway or train, but no man Japanese. You know that inside the train, not allowed to talking on the phone. and <laughs> really keep quiet. So sometimes, you know, the they don't really think why or you know, but they just yeah, it's rude or uh, yeah, or maybe people think I don't you know care the <laughs> harm. So yeah, so maybe truly sometimes wonder. Uh, the Japanese rule, like if I tell, oh, but why? <laughs> but sometimes they difficult to explain, but it's just the reason is uh, keep a nice harmony <laughs> of okay. the public. So, so are you saying that, yeah. that a Japanese person wouldn't necessarily say, but why, when 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 given some instruction, that, that they wouldn't question it? Is that, am I getting? Uh, uh, yeah, Sunday, of course, there's a reason, but uh, sometimes, um, not realism, but they just like follow the rule. It's something like, uh, 
because of that. Probably there's some rule is that people, um, yeah, how to say, yeah, but yeah, the some rule is just for the, made for the keeping harmony of the public, so yeah, yeah so I can't think of the example, but uh, sometimes even I read the rule, I, I think um, it's, it's okay, I mean, why? why I can't do <laughs> this, but it's probably just, uh, you know, keeping quiet or <laughs> keeping, yeah, you, you have to go this way or <laughs> that way or there are small rules. When, when I think about Japanese people that I've encountered, and that I have to admit, it's, it's back in the 90s, there were a lot of Japanese people still traveling. And so we would come across, when yeah. I would be reading groups around in Europe, and we'd come across Jap Japanese groups, extremely polite. That's, that's the way I would say it. they're extremely polite. So I, I take it that as part of this theme of harmony that you guys have all talked about that, that, that it's very important to be polite. Um, mm -hmm. You know, cause again, Americans, sometimes getting a group of Americans to be quiet and listen is, mm -hmm. is a challenge. Um, and uh, you know, that, that, that might be another one of those things you got that you have to teach Americans, hey, you need to be a little more polite. And yeah. you, when I'm talking, you need to listen. <laughs> so, yeah. um, all right. Um, yeah. So we're kind of talking a little bit about this already, but, but how, would you say, how would you say that travel in Japan is different than in other countries? That's my question. And Hisa, I haven't put you on the spot yet. So I'm <laughs> gonna start with you. And again, you you know, you can say, I don't know, I, you know, but uh, um, if you have an idea, a thought, how how is coming and visiting and traveling in Japan gonna be different than other countries? Uh different. Mm. Oh, maybe. The good, good thing is that probably Japanese customer service is uh, really good even compared with the other country, in my opinion. Because like, um, probably, for example, in the uh, US, maybe uh, they have more idea of the service. It also costs money. Right? So that's why people are giving the tips for service. But uh, okay. in Japan, it's already included. So lo lots of uh, Japan people uh, have the image of services free. Like, so they, their standard quality of service, uh, the standard of call service quality is pretty high. So okay. normally the tool is quite impressed uh, when they go to a restaurant or a shop, the, the service they, they see. So, okay. So mm. tipping is not really a part of Japanese culture. Yeah, not, not the Japan culture. So I had some students when they stay in a, a ryokan, uh, which is a Japanese old style uh, hotel accommodation and a pretty good service. So, you know, some American students try to give the tip and sometimes they, oh, no, 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 like they reject. <laughs> I mean, they, they think it's normal thing. So they, sh the, the worker, think they shouldn't receive the money <laughs> for that. But yeah, doesn't mean they, <laughs> you know, um, they don't <laughs> like to receive, but yeah. So then, yeah, people uh, cry, like, yeah, impress. I mean, tourists normally say very uh, service is good. So that's quite different. Uh, even I, um, of course, uh, when I travel uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, I sometimes a uh, very really nice hotel food and uh, the price is really low and uh, it's quite good too. Uh, but the uh, Japanese uh, idea of service, they, they always think that I uh, different uh, type of customer and uh, what they need, like they, they are educated that way, like when they work, oh, maybe this customer Need this, this so so they always try to like yeah um, give a good service to yeah so that's uh, 
quite different from other countries. That that's what I in my opinion. Mm. All right. Yeah. Are there guys, any any ideas about how Japan might be different than than traveling in other countries? Well, uh, yeah, I think also like you can expect like a punctuality of Japanese like uh, services, like especially transport. Like if you uh, at a certain time at a you know, certain station, for example, like uh, you can expect like this runs on time on schedule. So of course, you know, almost like sometimes like uh, delay by natural disasters, like uh, for example, like a typhoon, like a bio, like a bio storms and then like earthquakes. But the, most of the time, like uh, public transport like run very smoothly on time. So yeah. I think very different from the rest of the Asian countries and then sometimes like uh, North America, South America, right. North Africa. So punctuality in Japan is very reliable. Okay. okay. Hmm. All right. Um, we're just about out of time, guys. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna toss you a softball. I don't know if you're familiar with that <laughs> American sports analogy. I'm I'm gonna we're gonna close with a very easy question that you guys don't have to be terrified. Um, uh, just just for fun, for no other reason, uh, I'm gonna go around and ask each of you if you could meet one person from history, anybody from history, who, who would you most want to, to meet? If you could meet anybody in history, I'm going to give you just a half second to, to think about that. And while you guys are thinking about it, I'll just remind everybody that we're going to be uh, continuing with Japan this week um, because Sarah is away in Portugal and I'm actually going to France tomorrow. Uh, be a, a little bit less programming than usual, but he's just going to give us a, a, a virtual tour. Um, we're going to try for um, Thursday afternoon, which quite frankly in the United States is going to be the middle of the night. So uh, we hope that uh, uh, all of you will tune in and watch the recording of that rather than uh, being able to tune in live. Uh, and, and I say we're going to attempt that because uh, there's a little rain in the forecast. And if, if we can't do it on Thursday, he's just going to try again on Friday. And if not on Friday, on Saturday. So uh, we are going to have, and what remind me the name of the temple he said that you're going to be giving us a virtual tour for? Uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, not temple, it's a shrine. <laughs> Shrine, thank you. <laughs> Shrine, yeah. yeah like on my back. Yeah, background image. Uh, it's a Hiroshima, but uh, it's a Shinto style red tori gate. And uh, the one place I go in uh, on Saturday is uh, uh, called Fushimi Nari, Fushimi Nari Taisha. Yeah, it's in Kyoto. And um, they, they, that shrine is one of most famous and popular because okay. of uh, there are so many that. Uh, Tori gate, <laughs> yeah. And keep up to it. We've more. got to, for the rest of the week. Um, so you're uh, since we're already with you, Hisa. Do you uh, you have someone that uh, from history that if you could meet them and have a conversation, who would that be? Ah, uh, sorry. Uh, could you say again? <laughs> if you could meet anyone yeah. from history, Japanese history, world history, uh, anybody. Oh, okay. Just one. Who would you well, like? <laughs> Choose one. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. In, in the world, uh, if I can meet uh, Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Charlie Chaplin. Okay, we got a man who appreciates humor. My <laughs> answer, who, who, would, who would you most like to meet from history if you could meet anyone? Well, I would say one of the samurai lords called uh, Ryoma Sakamoto from the back in 18th century, end of the 18th century, who helped Japan like to modernize and then revolutionize. Okay. Like, before that, yeah, Japan used to be very isolated, closed, so, but he tried to open to the rest of the world. So. Okay, very good. And Yo Yo, close this out. Who would you like to meet if you could meet anyone in history? I would like to meet uh, Shotoku Taishi, uh, who lived in um, fifth century in uh, in Nara, and he was he's he's believed to be uh, 
the one who uh, created the foundation of a constitution of a Japanese constitution. Mm -hmm. He's um, legendary, but uh, and uh, there's some theory that uh, that says um, he didn't actually exist, and I just wanna uh, see like if if it's um, true or not. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> so your goal is to find out that historical figure really was historical. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, my answer changes all the time, but I'm kind of like you, yo, yo, I, I you know, um, I think about the founding of the United States and our democracy, and I would love to sit down and have a conversation with Thomas Jefferson, you know, who, who mm -hmm. basically wrote, you know, the, the Declaration of Independence and was part of the Constitutional Convention, you know, he was a, a amazing thinker and innovator and, 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 you know, an architect and an, I mean, he was an amazing person and I think he would be pretty fascinating. Sometimes I think uh, I'm going to cheat and give two. Um, Mohandas Gandhi, you know, in, uh -huh, in right. You know, wouldn't that be fascinating to just talk to him and say, what What were you really thinking? <laughs> so anyway, mm. anyway, guys, thank you so much. Yo-Yo, Masa, and Hisa, thank you so much for taking time <laughs> Day to talk to us about Japan and Japanese culture, give us a little bit of an insight into what a visit to Japan might be like. Um, we hope at Imprint Tours to be bringing a group in 2022. Of course, you know, COVID has to be well and truly over. So um, everything is a little bit of a maybe, but hopefully uh, sometime soon we'll be bringing a group and then uh, maybe I'll get to meet uh, you guys face to face uh, when we get down to Coyote, Kyoto way. So Thank you again for this time. Thank you, our audience. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you very much.